This has to be the busiest seaplane airport in the world. Probably in paradise. We just need to make sure we have enough fuel to get out of here. Who's on board today? You might know him, Nonstop Dan. So this is pretty crazy. I don't know if this has ever happened in the history of flights, that there's like 40 people on board. Economy, you can choose any seat you want, but there happen to be two aviation YouTubers on board. So you can imagine when Sam and I boarded and we're like, what? I hope today's flight passed your uh, critical review. How yeah. did we go? Well, yes, I'm always quite critical but it's for a good reason and today you can't complain when a flight is so empty but especially when it's Emirates. Emirates economy I think is one of the best in the world. The food is great. They pass through with drinks during the flight even after the meal service which you don't even get on premium economy on some airlines I've flown recently. Super amazing landing. The next couple days, I'm gonna do some seaplane flying around the beautiful islands of Maldives. We had the hardest flights, right? Hardest flight ever. Yeah, suffer so much. Yeah, feel bad for us, please. Right. I just have to say it's funny because I feel like people think that we fly business and first class all the time. Right? At least that's what people think. On a longer flight. Yeah. But today is super comfortable. Yeah. Arrived in sunny Maldives again. What a pleasure to be back. Here's my next flight, check-ins at the International Airport, the world's largest seaplane operator. So the interesting thing is you check in for your seaplane flight at the International Airport, and then there will be a car to take you across airside into the seaplane base. Huge seaplane terminal. Apparently there's multiple floors, there's hotel lounges for every resort. The guests go inside to wait for their plane. Isn't this cool? You can see all the seaplane action directly from the lounge before you fly. This has to be the busiest seaplane airport in the world. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten went out for takeoff together. This is a cool map showing all the parking position. Apparently I was told the flight I'm going on is Tango Alpha Echo here. And here is Tango Alpha Michael. It's going one, two, three stops and back to Mali. Here I am at my captain on the seaplane side, right? Yeah. Like, and I liked what you wear. <laughs> Look at this. Like shorts and sandals, exactly what I'm wearing. And that's how flying paradise looked like. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of bags. Already loaded. Let's see. Whoa. It is a twin order. It's a twin order on skis, I guess. So today we were released to go to Barcelos Vale Lagoon, which is a beautiful resort. We'll be making three stops after that to Lux Maldives and Mafashivaru, and then back to Maui. Right. How high are we gonna fly? So judging from the weather and uh, the cloud base, maybe most probably 1,500 feet. And complete VFR, right? Not allowed to go into the clouds. Yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, I just love these chaps. They're flying in their shorts and sandals. So we have a cabin crew on each flight. What do you do exactly as yeah, a cabin we'll, crew? Yeah, we'll do mostly we secure the boat and we'll do the old passengers and the luggage. We. Uh, You're like a sailor. In. You're parking the plane every time yeah. when it fly, when it landed on the water, right? Cool. Yeah, fine, I'm just exit towards the flight deck towards the second level where you came from. Uh, in case of emergency, to open the emergency exit, remove the car, pull the head out, put the doors, 
your life ticket is underneath your seat. Please keep the seat there fast and this is non smoking flight. To Basel way, it will take uh, 30 minutes. From Basel way to Lux, it will take uh, 10 minutes. From Lux to Mafashiwa, it will take 10 minutes. It's getting really, really hot here. I want to jump into water when I land. <laughs> So Sam, on your left, this is one of the water runways called North Left. And right now we are taxiing towards South Center. So it will be the other way because the winds are from around uh, 180200. How many water runways you have? We have two at the moment. Yeah. Two? Yeah. So we have just these two for takeoff and for landing. There will be South Left. On the left right now there's an aircraft landing. Uh, take go Alpha Echo ready for departure south center. Tango Alpha Echo behind the Tango Mazuru Cliff take off south center left down Zulu. Ready? Ready. Sometimes when uh, passengers request, uh, we like to show them around the place. Oh, know, really? Down to 500 feet, yeah. Yeah, so what we do is like we take the view from the release, we put in the view and uh, baggage weight as well. Yeah. And whenever when the passengers come in, we put the passengers according to their seatings. I see. So if it's within the CG range, uh -huh. uh, it's good to fly. If not, we will just adjust the passengers accordingly. You do your way about. Yeah. So we are good within the CG. Yeah, we are good within the CG. So this is the aerodrome chart for Barcelona. So in this chart, we can see the location of our flooring platform. If oh. there's a flooring platform. Yeah. And. Uh, Coral heads and buoys and such stuff. So we just have a look at the chart and make sure we don't land on one of these coral heads. We'll be landing uh, inside the lagoon and we'll be taxiing into, uh, the, the, yeah, fixed into the fixed platform. Uh, right. Because there's another aircraft landing in Barcelos in like uh, four minutes or something. Okay. Yeah. Do we uh, do we hold or do we wait for? No, no, no. By the time we are there, they'll be already done right with the We are pretty quick with the turnaround speed. Usually the average uh, turnaround time is like five minutes. So now we are coming into the uh, area at home. So on your right you see Outrigger. It's going to be our last stop. It looks like it's going to ring. Yeah. There's some isolated showers here and there. Because the, this cloud base is very low. Around 500 feet. We have to kind of push through it. In a bit you'll see the resort we are landing. So there's some uh, weather approaching so we have to make a landing a bit quick. But you'll see the resort on your left side. Okay. So I want to land well, before this thing comes. Okay, thank you so much. I'll put the platform on your side. Let them know we are landing. Okay. Tango Alpha Echo will be landing westbound Barcelona. Traffic, 11 o'clock. Same altitude, zero miles. Romeo, 
Oh, that was such a short landing. Yeah, That's sorry, sorry, because we had to land quickly because there's uh, some weather approaching. Yeah, the weather changed very quickly. Yeah. Oh, the platform's quite small, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's already loaded. He's departing. Yeah, now. he'll be shooting that way. Right, right. So sometimes when we are taxiing in high winds, we put some flaps to help us taxi a bit easier. So it's going to be a bit of a tricky docking because it's an offshore wind. I'll do my best. So when we get close enough to the platform, the cabin crew will step outside and get ready with the ropes. Yep. Our first stop, Bachella Whale Resort. Now we're first officer getting on board. We're going to the second flight now to uh, Lux Resort. After Star Checks. After Star Checks, uh, Coastal Lights. Check. Yeah, by Schwartz. Check no fires. Engine is Schwartz. Uh, normal. Tools. Yep. Normal, I don't know. Hello, Pop. Pressure. Pressure is checked. Master. He's on out. Reverse. Reverse is checked. Yeah, uh, after Star Checks, copy the ride is clear. We're back. Check. Uh, taxi behind the platform, same line as the other departing aircraft. 20 flaps, 50 pounds, safety must procedures as briefed. Bad, I think. So that's the runway over there. We'll be joining a left down and for a southwest bound landing. So this will, this is Lux Resort. We'll be landing here shortly. So I have to make a shorter approach because there's another <laughs> weather approaching again. So non-standard flaps full. Yeah. Flaps. From six RPM and landing checks. Flaps. Landing checks on the. I think of Ico is landing south of Spotlight. Uh, look at the people waiting for the passengers. They're waiting in the rain. Wow, they're waving and saluting us. We are refueling here, so we need around 700 pounds of fuel. 700 pounds, yes. So it's like a team effort, you can see from behind, my crew is handling the luggage. They're, yeah, they're helping off loading bags. So you have two tanks, you have one in the front and one in the back. Yes, for both engines. For both engines, I see. We all expect sunny weather, but the reality is it's raining quite hard now. And it makes it interesting to see how the operation goes in bad weather. John is the manager of Lux Resort here. I have never seen a line of staff waiting for the plane. It makes us feel like VIP. Tell me you just do it this time for me or you do it every day? No, every every arrival we greet the guests with uh -huh. a wave and uh, welcome them in our special way. So John, how many flights come through here every day? Okay, so it depends on the uh, international arrivals, but uh, on average it works at about 20 arrivals every day. 20 flights a day to come here. What's the highest number you've seen? The, the highest number, we've had uh, 44 movements in one day. 44 in one day, that's the peak season. Peak season and uh, very busy hotel. See you, bye bye. See you, bye. How cool is this? Captain not holding an umbrella yeah. waiting for me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Take off a cool Christmas slide out of Luxia, but I turn on to map. Good bar. Out of the arm. Uh, it's uh, the visibility is too low to land it. 
So flaps up. Flaps up. Info on call, dispatchion. Tell them heavy rain in Ma for sure. Relay for takeoff echo. Uh, try if you can make it to Kudara. Okay, then we are going direct to Lili. Kudara also very rough and visibility very low. Okay? The place we went to land is a bit too rough and the visibility was very low. So I just checked another resort, the same condition. So we are going to a big lagoon area which would might be a safer choice to land. So it's much nicer here, uh, alternative. This is the safest alternative for most uh, in the Arizona because it's a huge lagoon, there's nothing to hit. And right, but uh, how do people go to that resort or that resort they come here? By boats, they yeah. come here. Yeah. This is so interesting how the operation work. Like, you have alternates and they have to come and meet you now. In yeah. It's not because I'm nervous, it's just... It's <laughs> the <laughs> ring. It's the ring, yeah. I, I see. The off. Yeah, so we're going to wait for some time for them to come by boat. Yes. I had never ever imagined I would land on a platform rocking in the sea in the Maldives. It really defines all my expectation. We are now soaking wet in the heavy downpour. We just need to make sure we have enough fuel to get out of here. So that's the boat. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of teamwork from uh, the resort side and from the company side to get you guys back. Captain of the day, Captain Saif. Thank you. It's unbelievable. Now the sun is shining yeah. again. Thank you. We'll be back. We'll be back for more. I want a standard cavalcade, nice weather with a drone shots next time. Thank you. Yeah. 